Sin needs to be rebuked. That is a very unpopular message. And you might say, of course, well, my pastor speaks against sin. And if you have such a pastor like that, I say, praise the Lord. Because most pastors today, especially around here, they are not preaching about sin in any kind of a meaningful way. But we have to make people aware that they are sinning. Most of the time, sin is just referred to, if at all, it's referred to in a very general way. And we must be careful not to let it slip away. If we're trying to point out to people their sinful separation from God, whether they are a professed Christian or not, we must make sure that they understand that they have sinned. And the Bible is all in favor of this, but of course this is not a very popular message. And so I just want to look at Scripture and, and go over a few ideas here with you. We, it, is, it is a wicked generation that we are in, there is no doubt. And over time, we have gotten more and more desensitized. For example, I like this from Psalm 12, verse 8. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. One of the things you know that I've spoken of is the lies. I just see so many lies these days. People just say, oh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I'll take care of it. Oh, I'll do this and that. And they never do. I shouldn't say never. I shouldn't say never. All generalizations are false. Remember that. But it's, it's most of the time, you certainly can't count on it. And it sounds like a politician, doesn't it? We get so accustomed, accustomed to the leaders. You know, the vilest men are exalted. What did they say to get into office? What promises did they make? And they never follow through with them. And so when we have this for an example, then the wicked begin to walk on every side. The people naturally kind of follow their leaders, the example of their leaders. And I think this has happened to a large extent. When we look then again in Matthew 24, 12, this is again uh, the prophecy of the last days. And Jesus was saying that because iniquity abounds, that is unrighteousness, evil, because iniquity abounds, the love of many will wax cold. We get desensitized so that, like in the example I used about lying, many times the people don't even know that they're lying. So it needs to be pointed out to them that they are lying. If we spoke, and I got a chance to speak on lies in the congregation last week. And if we speak about lies, they needed to know that they were liars. What I'm saying is I had plenty of examples of this. And I did my best not to indict anyone because I wasn't trying to hurt someone in particular. But they needed to know this isn't, I'm not talking about somebody far away. I'm talking about them. And that is, that brings them before God say, to search their hearts and say, oh God, you know, am I keeping my word? I'm going to be accountable for this. Who have I hurt by my lies? And so in these ways, people need to know that they have sinned. And then it is up to us to tell them the Bible supports that. Again, I will have references to different things here in the description. Please look at this afterward to get your detailed lists. Another scripture that I like, which kind of covers some things, this is from Psalm 19, 12, and 13. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Do you see this secret faults and presumptuous sins? As I had already spoken of, I believe one time, a presumptuous sin is when this person I rebuke for lying says, no, I have to lie. In other words, they think they are forgiven because they had to sin. That is a presumptuous sin. And this will not go well before God on the last day, unless this individual will repent. And then it also talks about secret faults. Now, it identifies them as faults because we're not accountable to God when it's still a secret from us. But once we understand that we have done wrong, then we are required to repent. And if we do not, then it starts to become a sin. But we are to be cleansed from these secret faults before they become sin, hopefully. So in these ways, sin can be kind of a hidden thing. But we are told to rebuke it. And sometimes we must. And uh, it's better for the person to find out now than to find out later. So I'm going to read a few scriptures that note this. 
One is going to be from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. This is directly from Jesus. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. So here even Jesus is giving us a format with how we approach it when someone has, has been in sin. And it will be something that if they, if they sin against us, you know, directly. But I do fear many times people don't even understand that they are sinning. And it needs to be made known to them so that they have a chance to make things right with the Lord. Another scripture that's very simple is from Ephesians 5.11. I could do it from memory. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So we are not to fellowship with those, you know, committing the sins, doing works of darkness. We are to reprove them. That is to rebuke them. Sin must be rebuked. Sin must be rebuked. And again, we will look now at 1 Timothy 5.20. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. So they should be re rebuked before all. Now in scripture, there are a number of lists of offenses, you know, that we should not be doing that are identified as sins. And I have a, a list of offenses here. I have several lists of offenses in the description below. I invite you to look at them. They tell you some of the things that will go on in the last days. I don't say that these are all the lists, and some things are listed individually through Scripture. So please look at this. We are to make sure they know. I mean, how many people know that liars will have their part in the lake of fire? How many people know that? We need to be careful with our words, for God has said that we will give an account of every idle word we speak. And by our words, we will be justified. By our words, we will be condemned. You know that these people are likely to be offended now, but it is better for them to know now than to know later when there's no chance of repentance. So if you love your brother, if you love your neighbor, if these people are thinking, hey, I'm a good Christian, I'm living for God, but they are in sin, try to point it out to them. Try to be sure that they know and try to cling fast to the word because every Christian claims they cling on to the word. I hope that this blesses you. I pray that uh, the Lord will help you in employing this. Have a good day.